Hello, you dirty potters. How are you today? Oh, you already know what time it is, don't you? Yeah, that's right, because you read the thumbnail. Welcome to another episode of Glaze Review, where I take glazes off the shelf, I review them, I test them, I test them on white clay, I test them on brown clay, and sometimes I do combinations of them, just to give you a sneak peek of what you're buying before you actually buy it. Today we are testing PC-28 Frosted Turquoise from the Potter's Choice Amico line. For a long time we've been testing the Celadon glazes, so I figured I might dip into the PC, the Potter's Choice glazes, for a little bit of experimentation. It doesn't look like it has a lot of texture on the picture for the bottle, but today we are going to test it on a textured surface. So today we'll be testing it on a white clay body. This is a standardized B mix with grog in it. This is something that a lot of people use in their homestead. We are also going to be testing it on some redstone clay. I love redstone clay. This is one of my favorite ones. I believe it's from either Aardvark or Laguna. I'm not sure which one. I will link it down below for you if you want to use this clay. It's a beautiful clay. We'll also be testing it on an amalgamation of these two clays, which is redstone and B mixed with grog mixed together. This is essentially my garbage or recycled clay, but I've been experimenting with this, so there's a bunch of texture on this. We're going to get to see how this really works on texture. You know, I'm pretty sure that we have one more. Yeah, let's get this one. This one right here. No, don't do it. No. We're also going to be testing it on this clay called Black Mountain. This clay usually bloats. It has a very high amount of iron in it, which is usually what makes it so dark. But um, it usually comes out like this if you overfire it or mistreat it or don't follow very specific instructions. A lot of people ask me what this clay is. I will link it down below for you as for where you can get it. But do not be surprised if this clay ends up looking like this. This happens a lot of the time. But I do think if it doesn't happen, this will be a gorgeous color. If we can somehow get this transparency with this underglaze and see what this kind of light bluish turquoise green looks like on this heavy dark forest green you hear me you better behave you better behave you better not bloat i swear i'll, I'll, I'll find you i win Ooh, a fresh bottle oh yeah And you know what? Honestly, there's always that one nerd down in the comments below who's like, oh, why are you pouring your glaze? Why don't you brush it on like a normal person? I don't understand. Look, to be honest with you, I have already made a video explaining why I pour my glazes instead of brush them, and I've shown you the results, and I give you four different test styles, one of two, three, and four brushed on coats versus one pour, and most of the people in the comments below agreed that the poured on one looks better. But just because I know there's some new people down in the comments below, since we're nearing mm. close to 60,000 mm. subscribers, mm. and they haven't gotten that point across yet, I am going to brush one test style on for you with a really good brush, one of my favorite ones, just to show you the difference in between them. To be honest with you, half of the time they come out the same, but the times they don't come out the same, the poured on one usually does far better. But you know, just to kind of humor those whole like three people in the comments below who are kind of new to the channel, I'm gonna brush one on just to show you my point in case this comes out horrible in comparison to the others. Is he saying I've been doing it wrong the entire time? That's not what I'm saying, but what I am saying is after I show you this test dial, if it does come out worse or exactly the same, no matter which one it comes out as, you can no longer complain because I showed you video proof of what I'm talking about and the reason why I pour my stuff on instead of brush it on. Like it either comes out the same and I save tons of time instead of brushing it on and wasting time, or it comes out better and I save time. Like there's, there's no negative to the way I do it versus brushing it on.
don't know what it is about this glaze, but it's very difficult to clean for some strange reason. I've never experienced this before with any Potter's Choice glazes. And you know what? Because the more I think about it, the more it angers me about you guys questioning me whether pouring or dipping is better. I want to mix it with another glaze. That's right. I know it's not really a punishment for you. I know it's you get to see a new glaze combination, but I'm going to use that as an experiment now because you've angered me. So we're going to mix this frosted turquoise with this glaze right here, just on the top. Just, just, just to see. Okay, it, it doesn't fit. Okay, now it's stuck. Right, cool. Can I do that? Is that a thing I can do? Yeah. Yeah. I'm big brain. Okay, Potters, let's go over these one more time before we put them inside the kiln load. This right here is B mixed with Grog. It is a very popular white clay body that a lot of people use in their homesteads. This one right here is a redstone clay body. This right here is super dark black mountain clay. This is one of the darkest clays that I have. It is prone to bloating, so if it bloats, we can still see the color, although the body might be a little bit bloaty. And this one right here is our texture textile, just to see how it acts on texture. I've been kind of experimenting with like putting dots on stuff and then putting dots on those dots. So this is a very, very texturized one. We're gonna see how it works with that texture. This one right here is three coats that have been brushed on standard style. You know, you brush it on, wait for it to dry, brush it on, wait for it to dry, and do that until you get the desired amount of coats, along with a Joe Thompson rendition of Tenmoku Gold. We're mainly gonna be paying attention to these spots right here because these are the brushed on spots, but I am kind of hoping it gives us a really nice glaze on the top. And you might figure out a brand new glaze combination with the Tenmoku Gold, so who knows? This is also gonna serve as a test style to show you why I pour my glazes on instead of brush them on because I, I'm like 80% sure this is gonna come out way less colorful or have way less depth on it than any of these test styles right here considering I've done this experiment tons of times by myself and made a video about it and that's the reason why I pour my glazes on instead of brush them on. This is more of just like the I told you so pot. Okay, with that being said, Let's put these inside the kiln. All right, now that everything's out of the kiln, let's take a look at this glaze. As usual, the first test tile is the B mixed with Grog white clay body. You know it's weird because as I look at this textile on the white clay body, I see this like little crocodile kind of crackly skin and I don't remember seeing that on the bottle itself. And you potters know that one of my number one pet peeves whenever I test glazes is that I don't get the result from multiple tests that the bottle ever supports, right? So if it shows one little picture like this on the bottle and it's a completely different color and texture and depth, I go, well, this, this is just a lie. This bottle is a lie. But I took a second look at the bottle and if you look really closely, you can see the same texture that we just saw on this white B-Mix test dial over here on the little test dial on the bottle. It's my fault for not looking close enough before, but if you do look really closely, and I'm gonna try and zoom it in here, you can definitely see that kind of snowflakeish or crocodile skin. The thing that I'm ultimately impressed by is the fact that if you look close enough on this bottle, you can see on the inside of the texture where the glaze is a little bit thicker, it's nice and blue, but on the outside, it looks definitely more turquoise or a bit more green, especially right here on the outer relief. And that definitely mimics what we got here. So we have a nice crocodile kind of snowflake skin. We have a lot of blue. And if you see this side over here, it turns a bit more green. So the test style does represent what is on the bottom. I don't know exactly what to do with this now because it's not like I can just give one little cup to my patrons on Patreon, but also I do like this cup. So I might just keep it for myself, might give it to a friend, but I really do like that little skin texture there. And you potters know me, I love consistency. So when we look at the second test style, the one on the brown clay, it also has that crocodile type skin on it.
I actually have a small theory about this glaze because the inside of any vessel when you pour it in, well, I mean, it's not like you're taking a brush in there, so most of us pour it in anyway, but usually ends up a little bit thicker. But whenever I see a spot on this glaze body that's a little bit thinner, it usually turns a bit green or turquoise-ish like this. I think if I put a bit of a lighter application, I would have gotten a lot more of this kind of turquoise or lime green, but I'm pretty happy with this variation in between this green here or this light green. I'm not really sure what to call it, turquoise, green, lime, I, but there is definitely more green here than there is here. The issue that I'm having with this bottle is that this bottle has a medium in between the two, but neither of these colors. This looks like a grayish blue, a little bit more clear, while this over here is just like straight blue, or it's kind of this weird green. The combination of the two would definitely make what's on the bottle, but it is neither of these two. That being said, I am far more happy with this texture than I am with that of on the bottle. That being said, I am far more happy with these two colors and this texture than anything the bottle promised me. The bottle promised me one kind of slightly textured color, and I got one color, two colors, maybe even three, a nice little melt right here, and I also got this beautiful crocodile skin texture. And it's not like there's anything wrong with it either. It's not like it's crawling. It's not like this is not food safe. This is just the natural glaze body on this clay. And it turns out consistent in between the white and the brown clay body. I'm very happy to see that these are pretty much the same color. Now, when we look at that mixed clay I showed you earlier with a bunch of texture on it, I'm far more in love with this than I am with the other two test styles because it has so much texture on it that you really get to see the difference of this clay body, the texture and the glaze itself. This encapsulates all the possibilities of this glaze. I'm, I'm super happy with this one cup. You know, usually I'd be pretty disappointed in the fact that I feel like I got nothing out of the bottle itself. Like the bottle promised me this picture, but I got way more. But if it's one thing that I love far more than consistency, or at least the, the correlation in between the picture on the bottle and what I actually got, it's a versatility. Like now I know that whenever I get this glaze, I can have what a textured surface. I can have this color. I can have this color. I, I haven't even tested any mixtures of glazes with it. I bet it does a bunch of different things. The bottle promised me one thing, I got three, and I love that. This looks like a very poorly crafted Morning Star. If, um, if I had like a handle here, I could like, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm probably making a lot of you nervous. I should stop that. Okay, and before we move on to publicly shaming you for brushing your glaze on instead of doing what I do, which is pouring them, this is the Dark Clay Black Mountain Clay test style. This is a very old test style. It doesn't even have my maker's mark on it anymore. This is my old signature, if anybody has that kind of work with them right now that watches me. That being said, I stopped using these as a test style because there was so much iron in this clay body that would mess up a lot of glazes. So I knew it was gonna bloat and I also knew that it wasn't gonna take the glaze very well to begin with. It almost never does, which is why I stopped using this clay body. But I still think it's interesting to look at it. You don't wanna be like this. This is disgusting. Yeah, this dark clay test out almost never comes out the way I want it to. It's the reason I stopped using this. Also, I am very sorry to anyone who has tryptophobia. I probably just freaked you out pretty, pretty good. Oh, and last but not least, definitely your test style. The one that you guys all bug me about in the comments below. Because you're like, you didn't brush the glaze on. Oh, why didn't you brush the glaze on? You're, but you're about to get publicly shamed. So granted, I did mix this with another glaze right here. Just, just an experiment. I kind of figured if I'm doing all these experiments, I might as well do one just for me. So this part's not really for you. However, this part down here is what the brushed on glaze looks like after three layers. I let it dry, I brushed it on again, I let it dry, brushed it on again. You get three full layers of this glaze. This is what it looks like when it's brushed on.
if you look really closely down on the bottom middle right there, you can almost see the true texture of the glaze trying to come through, as if it was trying to get that depth to it, but it didn't have enough glaze on the clay body to come through and really be its fully matured self. Also, the variation in between green and blue is a lot more turquoise than it is one or the other. You notice on the other test styles, you either got green or blue, or like a mix of the two, but it was very little. I will say one of the larger reasons why I don't like brushing on my glaze is because unlike my other test styles over here, there are brush marks right here. You're supposed to, when you brush on your glaze, brush one way horizontally and then one way vertically and then one way, you're supposed to kind of alternate those ways. One way here, wait for it to dry. One way here, wait for it to dry. But number one, nobody does that. We all hate doing that. It takes a lot of time. Number two, brushing on in general takes a lot of time. And number three, can you really say my glaze is not better than yours? Can, have I shamed you loser. enough now? Are you good? Are you All right, have I answered your question well, you as to why I do things the way I do things? Sick. Freaks me out that a group of people who are known for thinking outside the box, you know, artists, in order to find new ways to express themselves are all on my YouTube comments like, you're not supposed to do it that way. You're not following the rules. I'm an artist. I think outside the rules on purpose. That's like our whole job is to figure out new ways to express ourselves. What are you, cracked? Oh, but you didn't follow the rules. But yes, the high majority of the time whenever I brush on a glaze, it turns somewhat like this, even when I overcoat it, even when I put like two more coats on it in order to try and get this type of texture or this type of effect out of most of the glazes that I use, they still turn out far better whenever I just get tongs, pour it on and then clean it up at a later time. It's faster, it's easier, I get a better effect. There's no reason in my mind why I shouldn't keep doing it. Watch there be one nerd in the comments below who's like, mm, actually, um, I kind of uh, don't like that texture, so you lose because I like that one more. And my personal preference mm, supersedes all of yours. Okay, look, stop lying to yourself, okay? This over here is clearly superior. Like, there's, like, I don't, I don't in, a, in a court of law, you would have lost. Well, thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today for the glaze test of Frosted Turquoise PC-28 from the Amico Potter's Choice line. You know, I enjoyed testing this glaze. You know, it's not often I test a glaze that gives me no representation as to what they promised me on the bottle, and I'm still very happy with it. Usually, I'm, I'm quite, quite angry about it, because I'm like, that's just lying with extra steps. But I'm actually quite happy about this, because this gave me far more versatility than the other ones did. I mean, look, I didn't get any color representation from the bottle. This is not this color at all. This is not this color at all. I had to look really closely to see the texture, even though the texture definitely matched. And even when you look at the one over here that I brushed on with three coats, very standard, it still doesn't look anything like the color on the bottle. Maybe that's close? No, that's, that's blue. That's straight blue. I would still suggest this glaze to most people, but I would give it to them with the caveat of, you're probably gonna get blue or green. You're most likely not gonna get turquoise. But thank you, Dirty Potters, for joining me today. If I haven't shamed you enough, make sure to click that like button. YouTube overlords love it when you click the like button. Sometimes they feed me little pellets in order to keep me alive, but they feed me just enough so I'm hungry enough to keep working. Thank you for your patronage. Oh, but I read the comments for like two days after I post a video, and I see you. I see you commenting. Oh, why don't you do it the way that I do it? The way I do it's much better. Even though I've proven to you it's not better. 